Good morning friends, welcome back to BioNews. Sorry for my disappearance for a few days. I realized that I needed to shorten the bio news to make them easier for people to uh, digest on a daily basis. So let's begin today. We're going to try to keep our bio news between three and five papers per day. Today we begin with a paper by Borst et al. In this paper, they they, it's a meta-analysis of studies on TRT, trying to determine whether TRT increases cardiovascular disease risk among people who are hypogonadal. That means, remember, they don't. these studies are mostly not studying TRT for people who have normal testosterone levels. They're studying it for people who have a disease in which they have very low testosterone. So when people have very low testosterone, they're given TRT. In general, cardiovascular disease risk does not increase, except in the case that they're given oral forms of TRT. The authors hypothesized that the reason was because oral forms of TRT cause more 5-alpha reductase uh, conversion from, of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is more present in because of the five the location of five alpha reductase is more present in certain areas of our body and has more potential at the androgen receptor. So often it can cause more damage. The authors also hypothesized that although the studies didn't include this, transdermal TRT, which means putting testosterone gels on your skin, may be even worse because the skin has a lot of 5-alpha reduct reductase availability. Moving to the second paper by Wang et al. This paper reviewed um, a kind of thyroid cancer that is called ATC, that's anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. Anaplastic thyroid carcinoma is a relatively untreatable form of thyroid cancer, not the uh, very uh, common papillary version that Dave Palombo, for example, unfortunately recently got, and thank God he got his surgery and hopefully he'll recover from. Um, anyway, so because, because of Dave, actually, I've been looking a lot into thyroid cancers and I've been also looking for news on the subject. So anyway, this one is about a relatively untreatable form of thyroid cancer. And what was interesting was this study showed that vitamin C caused apoptosis of those cancerous cells via an iron dependent mechanism. It's called uh, ferroptosis, which is like apoptosis via ferritin or iron. So it was quite interesting. You know, I don't know if you guys know this, but vitamin C is being researched a lot for the treatment of cancer, particularly injectable forms of vitamin C. And there's a long history, about an 80-year history of thinking that vitamin C could kill uh, cancerous cells. Finally, the third paper for the day, which we'll discuss in the most detail. This paper by D'Angelo et al. reviewed uh, what's called juvenile idiopathic arthritis patients. Now, juvenile idiopathic arthritis means young, basically children, with... Uh, an unexplained form of arthritis. And the purpose of this of this review paper, and by the way, review papers aren't technically news, right? But I've been reviewing them a little bit in these discussions because so I don't know some subjects at all. Like I don't know anything about arthritis, uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis whatsoever. And this paper is reviewing how that, the arthritis, may affect the growth of children. So I thought it was interesting. So sometimes when there's a review paper on a subject I don't know about at all, I'll talk about it with you guys so maybe you can learn with me. What I'll tell you what I learned from the papers, reading the whole paper. So what I learned here, I'll take you guys through my notes. Um, number one, um, the, the arthritis, so when, when children have arthritis, they tend to have growth development problems. In fact, uh, 10 to 40% of them have growth failures. Um, the growth failure happens from both the actual autoimmune disease, the inflammation, remember arthritis is an autoimmune disease, which means your body is attacking your joints. Specifically, your host defense system, that's the system that defends you from bacteria, from viruses, thinks that your, uh, that your joints are what's called an antigen, of like a dangerous uh, body that it needs to deal with, neutralize. So they attack it. So that's what arthritis is. So this attacking of the immune system in, in, among arthritics often comes along with the immune system attacking other parts of the body. And this attacking of the immune system may have effects on growth, on, on nutrient use, and on sleep and on all kinds of other things. So what's interesting to note is that these people with arthritis, these children, they grow slower because of two reasons. First, because of the actual inflammation, which I'll get to in a bit, that causes growth decay. And the second is actually the treatment of inflammation, which is they usually give them steroids. These are glucocorticoid steroids. Just for you guys to know, some of the steroids we produce in our body are sex steroids and some are adrenal steroids. They're, some of them are called glucocorticoids. When you inject glucocorticoids like cortisol, 
Sometimes you inhibit inflammation, like corticosterone sometimes used. You inhibit inflammation. But that also agonizes the glucocorticoid receptor, which has its own genomic effects in the body, which cause, sometimes causes the side effects that people get. So uh, let me go into a little bit of detail. The glucocorticoids specifically can inhibit pulsatile GH release directly. So they reduce GH and IGF-1 receptor expression also. So they can actually cause your brain to inhibit its synthesis of, uh, of a growth hormone. And it can cause your body to downregulate growth hormone and IGF-1 receptors. So what is, why is this really interesting to me? Like as I'm reading the paper, it's not just about children with arthritis. It's about any child that's going through a lot of stress. Why do you guys notice that young actors do you ever notice that child actors, they're never tall when they get older? They're usually like, they look like miniature adults. They're a little bit childlike. And I don't know if you've ever seen a very abused child, but they rarely grow into full size. So my idea is that that cortisol signaling, that stress signaling in childhood must be inhibiting their growth also. So it's an interesting observation. Now about the inflammation, which is also interesting. So inflammation can induce relative GH insufficiency it can produce what's called GH and IGF-1 receptor resistance. It can downregulate those receptors. It can dysregulate IGF-1 binding proteins, making them bind more to IGF-1, making you have less free IGF-1. And free IGF-1 is the most important thing for growth in children, according to this paper, uh, which has its own citations within it. Um, it can also impair uh, local GF, uh, GH and IGF-1 signaling pathways locally in the area like downstream signaling pathways and it can alter the, ca the categorical nature of synthesis of collagen changing the way the growth occurs in the first place. So the, the results of this paper were basically I found out that inflammation can slow aging in children so you really want to make sure it's slow growth in children so you really want to make sure that your children are not in an inflamed state and you also want to or, or, uh, and you also want to make sure that they're not in a stress state to make sure that they grow to their maximum capability. Finally, uh, the paper reviewed growth hormone treatments in children with idiopathic arthritis, and they found that high doses were much better than medium and low doses, just like all the other story, uh, studies I've read about idiopathic short stature among children. Uh, and the doses used were about 24 units a day for a 100 kilogram adult. It's by kilogram, so you can bring it downwards. I just made some calculations for you guys. Finally, even the children on growth hormone therapy that have low growth hormone because of arthritis, even though they have low growth hormone, they still get worsening oral glucose tolerance tests uh, when they give, take the growth hormone replacement therapy, which means they're getting insulin resistant and diabetic as children. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me. I'll see you soon with another episode of BioNews.